Hello and welcome to this session on statistical inferences that is hypothesis testing for single populations. I am your instructor Rajesh Durbala. I am an assistant professor in business analytics and research methodology. So what is there in this session? That's In this session we will understand hypothesis testing procedure using one tailed and two tailed tests and the concept of type 1 and type 2 errors in hypothesis testing. Moreover, we will also identify or develop the skills for framing the null and alternative hypothesis in research and also the skills to uh, test the hypothesis and identify the test statistics for inferential analysis. Okay, So that is going to be exciting and interesting. Let us move ahead and see what is in store for this session. Okay, I am excited. I hope the same with you as well. Let's see. What is hypothesis first of all? Okay, uh, statistical hypothesis is primarily an assumption about the unknown population parameter. So usually a population exists and we assume that this is a particular trait for a population. Okay, we do not have the exact data to say that let us say the mean score of my class is 30. I may not have the exact data but this is what I assume based on the performance of the students or based on the responses they give to my questions in the class. I assume that more or less these people may score close to 30. Okay, So that becomes an assumption about an unknown population parameter. Okay. So, hypothesis is nothing but an assumption about an unknown population parameter. Uh, remember one thing, every word is important. Okay, When I say unknown population parameter, the word unknown is very very important because if it had been known, there is no point in making an assumption. right? So, a hypothesis is an assumption about an unknown population parameter. So, the entire process of hypothesis testing is a well desi de designed procedure. So, you have to follow each and every step meticulously and when you are you know uh, making any statistical analysis, the application of probability and probability distributions do take place and based using these techniques, okay, we happen to analyze the occurrence or non-occurrence of a particular hypothesis. Okay, let's see. Move ahead. You can pause the video and you can read the slide. You can make notes and all these things. So, majorly, what is the important point that you remember from this is what is hypothesis? A hypothesis is an assumption about an unknown population parameter. Okay, next, these are the seven steps for hypothesis testing. Step one, that is, we set the null and alternate hypothesis. Step two, we determine the appropriate statistical test. Step 3, set the level of significance. Step 4, set the decision rule. Step 5, collect the sample data. Step 6, analyze the data. And step 7, arrive at a statistical conclusion and business implication. Okay, So, you have to remember this. This is going to be, usually this is a very, very important question for your exams as well. So, remember these 7 steps. Okay, Moving ahead, I will explain you each step in detail. Step 1 setting up the null and alternative hypothesis okay uh, when we write the null hypothesis this is how we uh, refer the null hypothesis with h naught okay remember this is writ uh, written as h sub 0 but when i read it it is read as h naught okay clear so that is what is a null hypothesis okay Theoretically, a null hypothesis is a no difference or status quo hypothesis and usually it is always considered to be true. So there are certain things that you have to remember. A null hypothesis is always considered to be true. It is considered to be a status quo means it does not challenge the status. So it is always represented in the form of an equality. Okay. So, it is always represented in the form of an equality. You will never find a greater than or less than signs for a null hypothesis. So, it is always in the form of an equality. 
whereas an alternate hypothesis is written as h1 or h sub 1 okay and it is the logical opposite of a null hypothesis let us say if i say a null hypothesis is mu equals to mu naught then the null hypothesis then the alternate hypothesis would be mu not equal to h naught okay so in other words when null hypothesis is found to be true obviously the alternate hypothesis must be false and vice versa okay now if you see this is how the exact way a null hypothesis is written okay h naught colon mu this is mu mu refers to the population parameter okay mu refers to the population parameter and in a null hypothesis we always have the equality so the population parameter equality some population parameter value is that clear similarly an alternate hypothesis is framed this way h1 colon mu not equal to mu naught as we already know this is the logical opposite of a null hypothesis okay uh, so when it is not equal to similarly it could be less than or it would it could be greater than we will discuss this in the coming slides now step 2 is determine the appropriate statistical test now what kind of statistical test do i need to apply for my data okay so how will i apply so what is the various uh, parameters I have like mean, proportion, variance, etc. So can these be considered to decide certain appropriate tests, statistical tests which can be applied? So this is what we do in the step 2. We try to figure out what are the various uh, tests available with me and what kind of tests could be applied for my existing data. Okay. And step 3, set the level of significance. Now remember, setting the level of significance, there is no hard and a fast rule, but it always depends on the type of research. So level of significance is the permissible error, okay? Or maybe I can say the size of the rejection region, clear? And it is usually denoted by alpha right so level of significance is generally denoted by alpha and it's the probability which is attached to the null hypothesis that is to say which may be rejected even when it is true okay that is to say level of significance is also the probability of committing a type 1 error you can make a note of this level of significance can also be defined as or alpha can also be defined as the probability of committing a type 1 error okay similarly level of significance is also known as the size of rejection region and uh, the convention usually is that researchers always consider alpha or level of significance to be 1% 5% or 10% okay so there is no hard and a fast rule that you have to consider 1, 5 or 10. It depends on the type of a research and it depends on what could be the permissible error from the researcher's perspective. Okay. Now setting the decision rule. Okay. Now how do I create a decision rule? Now you can see this is my symmetric bell shaped curve. Now this is my mu that is my population parameter and I have two levels set that is my z values okay we have put some z values and these form as my boundary okay beyond which that is to the right of this and to the left of this lies my rejection region and how do I define these now based on my level of significance that is based on my alpha now in my alpha is 10 percent let us say then this would be 10 divided by 2 and this would be 10 divided by 2 so these two values will form my critical values 
and anything to the right of it or left of it would be the rejection region and in the center the remaining 90% would be my acceptance region okay then fifth step collect the sample data you simply have to go for data collection with the appropriate sample statistics are computed then the first four steps should be completed before collecting the data this is very very important okay you have to complete the first four stages before you go ahead collecting the data it is never advisable to collect the data first and then accomplish the initial f uh, four steps of hypothesis testing so first is finish those first four then go ahead with data collection okay or else usually the researchers bias creeps in if we collect the data first and then decide on the first four steps of hypothesis testing then that's fine now analyze the data now some of the commonly used testing procedures could be the z test t test f test okay or chi square test so whatever test we need to apply we'll apply it over there and then we'll decide whether to accept the null hypothesis or to reject the null hypothesis okay usually what happens is the statisticians or the researchers are not the decision makers they can just make a recommendation okay based on the statistical evidence is gathered they can simply make a recommendation whether to accept or reject a uh, an hypothesis but it depends on the managerial decision uh, who may or may not accept the researcher's advice okay so now let's talk about the two tail test now this is h not okay in h not obviously we have this equality so mu is equal to mu not and the alternate hypothesis would be mu is not equal to mu not right now when i say mu is not equal to you have to understand that when it is not equal to means mu could be greater than or less than so it happens on both the sides so to put it simply i can say the rejection region falls on both the sides now if i look into this picture you can understand that i have my rejection region on both sides or in both the tails of my normal distribution curve so this kind of a uh, this kind of an analysis or this kind of rejection region tells me that i am doing a two tail test okay similarly on the flip side if i see i have my h not mu equals to mu not and if it is mu and if the alternate hypothesis is mu is less than mu not that is to say i have only to test on the left tail okay and uh, on the other hand if my alternate hypothesis is mu greater than mu not i have to test only on the right tail okay so if my level of significance is only 5% that 5% won't be distributed on both the tails it would lie entirely on only one tail in this case the entire 5% would lie on the left tail and in this case the entire 5% would lie on the right tail okay let's see how it looks now this you can see the entire 5% lies on the left tail i don't need to test it on the right tail likewise here i have my entire 5% on the right tail so that means i don't need to test it on the left tail now what are type 1 and type 2 errors okay now when i am rejecting a true null hypothesis okay the null hypothesis is true but i have rejected it erroneously that becomes type 1 error similarly if i am accepting a false claim or a false null hypothesis that becomes a type 2 error and uh, these are the right decisions that is accepting a true null hypothesis correct decision rejecting a false null hypothesis that also is a correct decision okay now you have to remember this table is very useful for you in calculating or making calculations for your problems okay so most often these this table would be offered to you along with the question in your exam if your exam has manual calculations okay so this these values would be provided but there's no harm learning them okay 
and you can see confidence level that is 1 minus alpha means 1 minus level of significance is my confidence level and this is my alpha that is 1 percent 5 percent and 10 percent clear so if it is a one tailed region these are the tabulated values and if it's a two tailed region these are the tabulated values okay these are some errors this is just something for your uh, memory or understanding or just to remember so that's it for today and you can get in touch with me on linkedin facebook twitter and you can write to me directly at, at rajeshdurbala.com most importantly i would love to listen to you in the comments i would love if you post some comments for me some words of encouragement some criticism whatever you feel like do post something at the end of watching this video okay we also run an organization called let peace proliferate you can visit us on this page on the facebook that is facebook.com slash let p pro this is a war against extremism a lot of things that are happening around us in the country or beyond the borders okay we are seriously concerned about it what happened in russia one or two days ago that is a grave concern we want such things to stop we have created an awareness campaign among the youth and we do not like the youth to be simple silent spectators i wish all of you to contribute towards the society in any form do like our page do comment share anything that you find around you which is of serious concern we will see how to work it out thank you for your patience and attention we'll see you soon